Kensington Palace, a royal house in the center of London, has historical significance and has been connected to the British royal family for 10 centuries. Princess Diana, also referred to as the People's Princess, lived at Kensington Palace at different points in her life. Her main residence at Kensington Palace was apartment E. Prince William and Harry have special memories of this apartment because it played a significant role in their childhood. Princess Diana loved the apartment so much that she decided to stay there after her divorce from Prince Charles in 1996. Having grown up in Park House, which is located on the Sandringham Estate, Princess Diana formally moved into Apartments 8 and 9 at Kensington Palace when she married Prince Charles in 1981. When the Spencer family went on vacation, Diana would frequently play with Prince Andrew and Prince Edward, the Queen's sons, rented the property from the Spencer family. Now, let's talk about the specifics of Princess Diana's residence at Kensington Palace. Kensington Palace resembles a cool architectural puzzle with more pieces added on without worrying too much about making it all fit. After their wedding in July 1981, Prince Charles and Diana made Kensington Palace their home by moving into the recently combined apartments eight and nine. This three-story space became their London headquarters, and even after their separation and divorce, it continued to be Diana's official residence until her death in 1997. Apartments 8 and 9 are located in the northern part of the main palace. The buildings are like two connected rooms, and this place has three floors. There was a nursery and two reception rooms at one point, but in 1981, these separate apartments were combined so that it would create the perfect cozy family home for Prince Charles and Princess Diana. The home was set with cool features like a helicopter pad and several outdoor gardens, including one on the roof. There was even a greenhouse, but what else would you expect for royalty? There was a drawing room that served as Diana's office. There was also a formal dining room, perfect to entertain in one of the family's favorite hangouts, where she had bamboo dining furniture and an ornate rug. Most of these spaces also boasted fireplaces. Princess Diana's sitting room was also a space she used to unwind and kept many of her knickknacks here too. The princess also had a collection of stuffed animals that meant a lot to her. When Prince Charles and Diana gave birth to their sons William in 1982 and Prince Harry in 1984, they made apartment 8 at Kensington Palace their home. This location was frequently used as the backdrop for the official photographs taken of the family, which provided outsiders with a unique glimpse inside the royal residence. In some photos from the 80s, the living room is seen, decorated in a vibrant style using pink and blue hues. Moreover, there's a mahogany trunk with framed family portraits in the background. Diana's residence exuded a refined English vibe while it was vibrant with greens and yellows. Because of the plush down couches, the place felt really warm, even though it was upscale. The home also featured a selection of exquisite artwork and museum source antiquities Diana added. Princess Diana utilized floral wallpaper, a combination of modern and antique furniture, and golden lacquer to decorate her Kensington apartment. After 1997, the flats were converted into offices for various groups. Kate and Prince William visit certain areas of Kensington as well these days. Prince William's mother raised him there, and since then, his own royal family has become the center of his public life. Kensington also has some areas that are accessible to the general public, allowing everyone to sample a breathtaking taste of royal history. For example, look at the lovely Kensington Palace Garden. When you step into Princess Diana's cozy residence at Kensington Palace, you'll find she adored muted hues like pink, green, and blue. Her rooms had luxury fabrics and lovely wallpaper, making them seem like a dream. Diana's sitting area served as both her office and a comfortable place to relax with chairs in dusty pink and white carpet. Imagine Diana's sunny yellow drawing room as her gathering place, complete with lovely paintings of nature. Dinnertime visitors were welcomed to Princess Diana's mansion with a great entrance hall embellished with classic architectural features. Tasteful art decorated the walls. The atmosphere throughout the Kensington apartment perfectly combined heritage and modern style. In addition to being sites of elegance, Diana's apartment served as witnesses to the varying phases of her existence. Family photos were hung on the walls, documenting plenty of happy moments and setting up a cozy and welcoming environment. 
Deanna's private office in Kensington Palace was also proof of her charity activities, which she was ever involved. There was a desk in the room and she used it to work hard on mail, organizational tasks for her charity work and other objectives. She wrote letters and gave talks in this area to raise awareness about causes such as AIDS, clearing landmines, and emotional well-being. The princess's appreciation of art was evident all around her home, where paintings and sculptures adorned the walls. Most significantly, she participated in the selection of contemporary artwork for the palace. The residence's fusion of traditional and modern aesthetics echoed Diana's capacity to close the gap between royalty and the contemporary world. As a mum, Princess Diana paid particular attention to the layout and decor of her children's rooms. Her sons each got a separate individualized area that reflected their unique hobbies and personalities. The nursery supposedly covered the top floor of the house and Diana hired a specific children's interior decorator for this. It was fun and colorful, which she knew the boys would love. One room had a carpet patterned with strawberries and this is where Prince Harry and Prince William would play on their rocking horses. Within that same room, Prince Diana would join them at a light wooden table for games and meals. William and Harry's chambers were brimming with vivid colors, books and toys, making the little princes feel nurtured. The drawing room is certainly one of the most famous spaces here, and Princess Diana had it furnished with exquisite furniture and a color scheme of soft pastels. It was the ideal location for private gatherings too. This is the most cozy spot with a gorgeous piano decorated with mismatched frames holding family photos. The grounds outside Princess Diana's home were protected by walls, and she sought comfort in the gorgeous Kensington Palace Gardens. Diana had a special spot in her heart for the subterranean garden, which was an oasis of calm with colorful flowers. The grounds gave the princess a peaceful haven and a breathtaking setting for many of her treasured moments. Following Princess Diana's untimely death in 1997, memorials and tributes were erected in and around Kensington Palace as part of a legacy and commemoration. Diana's memories of the sunken garden, one of her favorite places, changed to the White Garden. In addition, since her passing, the palace has held events and exhibitions to celebrate her life and humanitarian endeavors. As you can see, the apartments at Kensington Palace belonging to Princess Diana were not just royal chambers, but rather a representation of a well-lived life, with each space brimming with carefully selected personal items. The decor related the tale of a woman who assumed her regal title and left a legacy of humanitarian advocacy and classic grace. Following this look at Princess Diana's Kensington Palace Apartments, what did you think? Was her house as magnificent as you thought it would be? Be sure to answer this question for me before you go. Do you consider yourself more of a minimalist or maximalist? Do you have any sentimental collections like Princess Diana did? I think I'm definitely a maximalist. I collect things through my life that meant something to me, just like Princess Diana did. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'm Kara, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.